got swabs, we've got data sheets, UV, rope bags. These biologists are preparing for a day at Dees Island Regional Park, but they'll be spending it indoors. Today we're continuing our bat monitoring uh, project at Dees Island Regional Park and we're going to head up into the bat colony and actually capture and tag some of the bats that are living up in Burr Villa. Burr Villa is a heritage house in the park. In the warmer months, as many as 3,000 bats live in Burr Villa's attic. It's the largest known maternity bat colony um, for little brown and yuma myotis bats. So we're really lucky to have such a special place here. One of the project goals is to find out if a fatal disease called white nose syndrome is affecting small bat species in BC. White nose syndrome can kill entire bat colonies. It's late morning and the bats are resting, which makes it easier for the biologists to capture them. Each bat is carefully placed in its own cloth bag. This is a rare opportunity for these biologists to observe an entire colony. So bats are one of these uh, groups of animals that is kind of hard to get at and so they're a little bit understudied and maybe underappreciated in a lot of ways. Every time we monitor or, or capture them or tag them, we're learning stuff. It's incredible how much we don't know about these species. 120 bats in cloth bags are moved to another park building and hung on a clothesline. Hanging them up gives the bats space to be comfortable and prevents overheating. Over the next 12 hours, the bats will be measured and tagged by volunteer biologists. Project lead Patrick Burke believes this is the first bat tagging study ever in BC. We're actually inserting a small transponder um, called a pit tag underneath the skin of the bat and that transponder communicates with an antenna that we've deployed um, on the outside of the roost so when the bat flies out of the roost um, we can identify which individual is coming and going from the roost. Bats amazingly live 20-30 years sometimes in the wild so we're able to collect data on those bats using this roost for the entire life of those bats. We're also taking samples of the skin microflora so bacteria, fungus that's on the skin, so we can do some testing to see if the bats um, potentially have white nose syndrome. White nose syndrome is a fungus that kills small bat species during hibernation. The syndrome has not been detected in BC yet, but biologists are already looking at ways of mitigating its potential impact on local bats. There are two species of bats in this colony, and they are difficult to tell apart. Fortunately, there's an app for that. As you kind of hold the bat next to the, next to the iPad, you can actually um, collect a, si a sound signal uh, which will help determine which species of bat they are. The little brown bat and the yuma bat have different call signatures, so the frequency is higher for the yuma myotis and the frequency is um, below a certain point for the little brown bat. Tagging and measuring the bats is a labor-intensive process. The overall project will continue for at least another year. It's hoped that much will be learned about these bat species and that they can be spared the deadly effects of white nose syndrome. So those synergistic effects of white nose syndrome, you know, habitat loss and other anthropogenic impacts on bat species really require us to um, be aware of what's happening in the bat population and be proactive about management and conservation for bats in BC.